I want to talk to you for a few minutes today along these same lines, but it might be a little bit, uh, might be an angle that you are not used to hearing or maybe an angle that you don't want to hear. See, sometimes some of us have created a doctrine or a theology or an idea in our minds that may not be so biblical or so scriptural, but it's something that we have created in our heads. And so shall we all turn to Luke chapter 1, and we're just going to pull from the story of how the, when the angel came to Mary. We're going to read from verse 26 down to verse 38. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that Holy One who is to be born will be called Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her, who is called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. See, when we, sing, uh, when we sing this song in church that we just sang, or when you sing it at home or hear it, many a times we tend to focus or we're drawn to focus on these words and apply it to our situations, our circumstances, our desires, furthermore, our goals and our aspirations, even as we look forward to 2019, we already have created things in our minds that we foresee or we want to see happen. And that's, that's almost the mode in which we sing Waymaker, miracle work. And then we believe that our God is able to pull us through anything. We believe that our God can bring us out of everything. He can heal us no matter what we are experiencing. He can create a way. He can open a door. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And many times it's beyond our comprehension and our understanding. But that's okay. He's God. He's God all by Himself. And then we read, there are different scriptures that we read that will state that He is the God of the impossible. Even this scripture that we read and it was depicted that nothing is impossible with our God. And I too believe in this power of our God. The power that raised Christ from the dead. That lives in you and I. That can open doors that can set captives free, that can give us peace when all around is a storm. I also believe in the love that God depicted to us when He came down, a love that knows no bounds. He left all His glory and He came to earth to live among us, die, be resurrected so that we could have eternal life. I believe in this God who is the God of the impossible. But I also believe that many times we, you and I, 
get things misconstrued, get things mixed up. And we tend to believe that God is, in, God is the God of the impossible for my plans and my purposes. And I would like to tell us this morning that He's a way-making God and God of the impossible in order for His plans and His purposes to be accomplished in and through our lives, through your family, through your community, through this church, wherever, whatever. He's a God of the impossible, but it's also for His plans to be established, and for all glory to go to Him, not you and not I. So as we look at this, we see verse 37 where it said, with God, nothing will be impossible. But I want us to look at a couple points before that, that transpire before it gets to that part of the story. See, Mary... When I read verse 28 and verse 30, where it says, highly favored one, or in verse 30, where it says, Mary, for you have found favor with God, I believe you and I need to be living a pleasing life before our God. We just can't be running amok everywhere and not living according to God's call in our life and being true disciples of Christ as we've heard over and over preached from this pulpit. Unless we're true disciples of Christ, we will not be finding favor with our God. Mary found favor. Oh, what a glorious thing to hear from your maker, isn't that? Oh, how I wish... I would hear that, that God has found favor in seeing me. And it was re reiterated. And you know, if you and I are satisfied where we are in life, and we look around us and we say, you know what, I'm doing well, I, I believe God is pleased with me, that's not a good measuring stick. Myself being satisfied with where I have made it in life is not a measuring stick of whether you have found favor with God. Your bank account, the assets that you have uh, accumulated, or anything else unrelated to, to uh, uh, your finances, whether it's, whether it's um, uh, you know, I guess a car or a house is also that, but whether you found a, uh, found a good spouse or not, that's, that's not necessarily the measuring stick that we can go by, that God has looked upon us in a favorable way. And see, Mary, when, even after these statements are made to, made to her that she has found favor with God, it didn't mean that she wouldn't experience trials. It didn't mean that Things suddenly got better for her, and from now on, her standard of living was upgraded, or she was not going to experience difficulty. I would, it's probably true that it got harder in that cultural context for an unwed lady to be with child. And all the things that came about with it, it would have been even more difficult, even more challenging but it also says she is blessed. See, you and I need to be living a life that is pleasing to God so that we can find favor in His eyes. Mary was doing that. This is all before we see He is the God of the impossible written in Scripture here. Point number two in verse 38. Behold the maidservant of the Lord. This is what Mary says. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed her. Mary's attitude upon what she had heard. She had such a belief and a, and a trust 
in God. That even though what has now transpired, probably over a few minutes or so, what has been told to her has probably turned her life upside down. She's probably making plans for a wedding or looking ahead to her future with Joseph. And now this has come into play. Well, see, many of us will say, well, you know what, Johan, if uh, an angel showed up and visited me and spoke to me directly, then, yeah, I too may respond and do it. My question to you on that is to really look deep inside about your understanding of the Holy Spirit. We don't have an angel with us. The Holy Spirit, so much greater, lives inside of us. We don't need an angel to show up and frighten you out of your socks and correct your path. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Jesus went so he could send the comfort of the Holy Spirit to be with us. And so we need to understand that the Holy Spirit lives within us. How many of us are willing to do, are willing to take on the journey or the will of the Lord if it means there's a tough journey ahead. I'm sure instantly Mary knew the journey was going to be tough ahead, but she also knew that the grace of God and God's purpose and plan being established in her life was more than enough for her. See, we are happy, you and I are happy or fine with God's plan and purpose being established in our life when it's something we see as favorable, when it's something that you and I think is something that will be beneficial to me. If that is your and my perspective this morning, folks, we really need to take a look at where our heart is because all of this is a matter of the heart. It's not a matter of the social status or the lifestyle of Mary's or you and I. It's a matter of where her heart was and where is your heart, your mindset, your attitude, Where is that in this moment? Are you and I willing to accept the plan of God to be established in our life if it means it's more difficult, it's more challenging, or if it means it could be life-changing in the case of, say, someone like Mary? Everything that was already planned or thought of in her mind was completely changed. Think of how many years you have been on this earth and how many plans and goals and ideas you have. What if in this moment it was to be erased? And you know what? From now on, God is blazing a new trail in your life. Something completely different. Are you and I at the place in our walk, in our relationship with God, that we are able to just let go and say, you know what, God, I trust you. You're in complete control. So it doesn't matter if I don't know what what tomorrow holds. Because I know who holds tomorrow. Amen? She allowed God or God's will to be established in her life. See, as as we look at this passage of Scripture, we see that obedience, faithfulness, and living for God's glory is what is vital in our life. As we sing this song, 
as we think about the words in this song, they apply to us when we are within His will, not within my plans. When we are within His will and under His covering, that is when we will see the destiny-changing, miracle-working power of God in our life. It's not for our glory or our benefit. When we say God is the God of the impossible, why is He the God of the impossible? And in what situation is He the God in, of the impossible? And it's when I am walking and talking and in communion with Him and understanding what His exact will and plan is for my life. See, many of us, if we were to, if we were to take a paper and a pen out right now, or whatever it is, your iPad, and jot some notes down, and I were to say, can you write down what you want to accomplish in 2019? Or where do you see yourself headed in the next three years? What would be something you would like to accomplish? Many of us will have several things that we can write down. And it's not bad. It's not wrong. We would write down different things related to our careers, to our school, to our kids' schools, to our, uh, our jobs, our financial uh, goals, um, things we want to change in our personality or in our relationships, or maybe uh, we find a spouse or whatever it is, we would be able to fill that paper up pretty quickly. But my question would be, any of these things that you have written down, before you even thought of them, before you logically put that list together, did you consult, did I consult God? Did I ask Him about His plan and His will for my life? Or did I write my letter, sign off on it, and then ask Him to put a stamp on my Christmas wish list? And I think it's a good time for us to reflect on our heart condition, on our mindset. How we are approaching or going in to this year that's coming up. Are we going to go through it the same way? Nothing changed. You know what? 2019, I had these plans. I made them in 2017. I'm not going to change. Or are we going to say, you know what, God? I trust in you. I know I've written a few things down or I've made some plans. But today, I'm going to say, you know what, Lord? Those plans are my plans, but they're not yours. I need to find out what is God's plan in my life. And I want us this morning to take a few minutes to really just reflect and to think about this and make a change in our minds and in our attitudes as we go forward. See, our God is all those things that this uh, skit depicted. He's a promise keeper. Trust me, he's a promise keeper. And oh, is he the light in this dark world. We all know that. We've seen it. But if we really want to get out of our frustration, get out of the depression or the anxiety or the agony that we live in, no amount of things outside of your body is going to make that change or make your mindset or your perspective change. It's a matter of my heart. It's a matter of your heart. I want to see, you want to see the miracle working power of God in your life. The power that can redraw your destiny and change your course. But it starts by me being faithful and obedient to Him. It starts by me putting my full trust in Him, being a true disciple of Christ.